Table one, could we have your reporter, please? So I think basically we, we kind of make three points. One is that we um, don't want to disturb or we're going to reduce the disturbance to the existing landscape. It's a beautiful, it's, a, it's a costly, and, and that would be the principle that we would like to be uh, uh, part of this. And the second thing would, the, um, yeah, so, so for the design on this, I would say, let's propose to do something protect us for the next 50 years and not 100 years, not 200 years. The reason for that is in 50 years, everything changes. Technology change, the method to do uh, flood, flood prevention changes, maybe it's uh, less costly for certain materials, and, and, and everything has a life span where, where I think we overly spend and overly engineer and we cannot predict uh, what's going to happen in 50 years, right? Um, Honestly, the third one, I don't know what that exactly is. <laughs> so I give up on the third one. I'll just do two. Okay. Oh, oh I see. So, so we were discussing reach two, and there were discussions on putting, you know, green space, putting places for people to stay in. But I'm a resident, I go there every day when, when the weather is good. It's just a walkway, right? There's no need to overly spend money in an area with just a pathway through. And then I never see many people in there. It's just people in and out of the Battery Park City. So, and then that's the part of the city. People is not gonna sit there and enjoy because we have all those parks inside that we are spending time there, right? So these are the, the three things that we were thinking about. Thank you, table one. So table two. Hi, um, hope I can. Oh, sure is. <laughs> Okay, so um, we talked about uh, Reach 2 first, uh, and we, we kind of like the Esplanade the way it is um, with the, the, widening, the wider path with the trees on both sides. Um, and um, we talked about not having steps on Tribeca Point. We didn't like that detail. Um, that there could be something there, maybe some tables or an area for seed, seating and whatever, but not, not steps. We didn't care for that. But we do want to keep the character of the pathway with the trees on both sides. Um, it's kind of a nice esplanade. And also to keep it wide enough, because as of right now, it's a mix between pedestrians and skateboarders and bikers, and we just don't want to lose that either. So, because that's, that's part of the whole character. <coughs> on... Um, uh, we, for the, for just overall, uh, we were concerned about drainage and backflow, and I guess that's something that has to be <laughs> kept in mind for the whole project. Um, let's see. On I think that's it for the on Reach Two. Um, we we talked about having a bike lane on Northmore. That we would we don't feel that Northmore Street needs to be as wide as it is um, because it's just. It's tremendous, it's very nice, close it down and make a football field out of it or something. But <laughs> if, we, if it has to have some use as a street, and it does because rush hour, it gets pretty busy. It needs a bike lane, it needs to, be, it needs to have um, trees. We like the trees. We like the, um, uh, the wall closer to the buildings, right? That's what we talked about. Closer to the buildings as much as possible um, we weren't crazy about the wall along the bike path, between the bike path and the, and the cars, and we're hoping that the wall looks like something that we can all live with, uh, just aesthetically. <laughs> and um, and we're, we're hoping to see what gets done in terms of going north of Northmore. 
we know that the water did come up past Greenwich, so uh, there has to be more work I in that area in terms of, of holding the water back. But it, you know, that possibly with this might work. Let's see what else do we have here. Um, Okay, did, was there anything else that we talked about? That's good? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, table two. Table three. All right, so for reach two, uh, we also kind of agreed with minimizing scope and impact um, to the neighborhood. Uh, we talked about widening the connection uh, between Hudson River Park and the current walkway, which right now is quite narrow and dangerous. Um, inclusion in, of additional green space or trees in line with uh, at least what is there today. We question the value of approaching the water, which can be um, not the cleanest there and perhaps a safety issue. Uh, we like the slight meander versus straight line approach and then elegant entrance and approach to Rockefeller from the uh, from the walkway with the better sight lines. Um, okay, reach one. So we also had deep concerns about a wall that is 10 feet in height adjacent to the bike path, and that will also forever limit uh, the eastward expansion of Battery or of uh, Hudson River Park should the relationship between cars and walkways and bike paths in the city change in the future. You won't be able to modify that. Um, we also discussed the bike lane on North Moore uh, as an important opportunity to improve that street. And uh, I guess we preferred to expand the sidewalk uh, if possible, reduce parking, uh, and maintain trees. Thank you, table three. Table four. <laughs> you want me to come to you? Lots of air circulation <laughs> concern. <laughs> Thanks. Um, pedestrian safety with is something that's really hot in that area. And finding ways to connect back to the pedestrian walkway and the bicycle walkway, knowing that bicycles do go behind those buildings and finding a safer way to have an integration with both. Also, FDNY needs access behind there. It didn't look like there was enough space for a fire truck. Beyond a fire boat, we needed to have fire trucks so they could access and help people from what's there. Um, maintaining mooring access was really important, but we did talk about a potential pedestrian ribbon experience that would go from the corner out further into the water while still being considerate of limiting shade coverage over the water. And we decided that you can't really opine on the connection at the pinch point because not all the aspects are shown because they don't know how the walls and intersection of chambers work yet. So you can't make a final feedback on that particular corner until we know what the treatments on Chamber Street will be. So it's a little difficult because we like the idea of ribboning out from that corner. But if you're going to have a wall five feet away, maybe that isn't the best access and, and look. So that's how we looked. We did prefer something that was less concrete. That was a really large conversation. No amphitheater in the corner and recognition that 
step downs are great and getting to the water is great, but it only happens kind of April, if you're lucky, if the weather is nice, through October. So the priority that looks like it's listed on there with step downs and a giant open space in the corner was very much not liked. And also the feeling was the large amphitheater look and the open space in the very corner, which is on the northwest corner of that area, would be very attractive to large groups and then limit the quality of life of the learners in the school and the people who live in that building. I think I got everything there for that one. Am I supposed to do reach one now? Please. Fantastic. Okay, so reach one. Large preference to look at opportunities to utilize non 9A without walling off the bike lanes, which is also something that we know the Hudson River Park Trust Advisory Council spoke of as well. And the conversations about using 9A also included the concerns about the pedestrian crossings on 9A and having a wall be more of a living wall. We had long enjoyed the fact that 9A is a much better looking road than it had been decades ago and that is part and partial to the greenery that's and the landscaping that's down the middle of the road. So if you have to put a wall there, find a way to make it a living wall, green wall, make it beautiful, but also at the intersections, make sure that you haven't built the wall far enough so you can't see as you're crossing at the intersections, whether that means going into a glass wall, which we know is not necessarily as preferable, and then into a deployable, something that makes sure that you can see all the way around for cars, bicyclists, kids, dogs, and everything that goes along with living and working and playing downtown. Um, the impact on the decisions and the connections to reach two, really important. And that affects all of 9A and, and Chamber Street. So that was a big concern. Um, it'd be helpful to include infrastructure improvements with Con Ed and DEP. So we all know that there's a lifetime, a living lifetime for all of the things that we have. And certainly downtown, we've seen them tear up the road to put back the road, to have Con Ed come know and say, we have work to do. So having a conversation with the other agencies and really looking at what is the lifespan and the usability of what the tunnels are, what is, and being open to the possibility of moving to integration and find a better solution is critical because it will also set the path for how that works going up the rest of 9A, which we thought was really important. Um, North Moore Street, we didn't feel needed to be so wide. Not really certain why it's a five lane road that's one way. Um, certainly we thought it could be a wider sidewalk, without a doubt, add trees, put the parking there, it didn't need to be five lanes, and ensure that you do bump outs on the corners to produ produce a better pedestrian experience and also allow then for views to the water because one of the things that is very concerning and some of the other things that we looked at is the inability to see the water due to walls and know that you're actually on the island or how to get to Hudson River Park because there's no, um, you can't geolocate yourself if you can't see the water. Um, option one we felt was very concrete heavy, not very green on the bump outs. Option three was better with more tree space, but again, focus on the pedestrian crossings, focus on the view, focus on adding greenery. You, there's ways to definitely keep the parking, but make sure that restaurant sheds are not on that side of the street. And input from DOT to figure out how to best make the crossing at Greenwich. And that's it. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, group five. Hi everyone. Um, five. So just generally, we started off with a concern that um, this project might not be uh, talking to each other. So we'd like to uh, make sure that happens. And I think going on from what was just said about uh, uh, that, that ties in with uh, coordinating with Con Ed and other um, other utilities. And so I think first takeaway, I'm, ad I'm embellishing what we actually discussed, but I'll take that license. Um, let's make sure that this project is being coordinated with everyone else we can think of. Air Force, Space Force, 
Coast Guard, Con Ed, whoever. Because, um, yeah, we have seen situations where, you know, up on Broadway and Worth Street and Chambers Street when they were digging those up for years and then someone comes along six months later and goes, oh, we've got to do that again. It's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, reach two. Um, it was noted that the platform will need to be replaced anyway. Whatever happens, the platform's going to have to be replaced. So this is an opportunity to improve the seating and areas for planting. Currently, it's very busy. Um, it's it's uh, was it 20 feet wide, I think, the, the walkway at the moment, 26 feet wide. So 15 feet wide. Um, so adding to that will, will be a net benefit. Um, all walkways would be wider under all the uh, uh, than present under all of the options. Um, it was noted that um, benches, there, is, there are existing benches and these are needed for some disabled or less mobile people. So the, the, the tiered seating down to the water, waterfront looks good, um, but again, it would, it, it would not be useful for everyone. Um, and uh, so we need to make sure that, um, you know, I think I use the term, everything along there is ADA compliant. I think that would be a, a, just a good starting point for that. Um, we also noted the BPC Gardener's Garage is under Tribeca Point. Um, there might not be enough room under some of the options, uh, under the couple of, op couple of the options for their staging of equipment when they're getting earth out and so on and tools that they use. So we need to make sure that um, any option doesn't, when they need to have that space to, to group their equipment, that it doesn't narrow uh, the walkways. Um, option three probably had the best flow just in terms of the design as someone who uses it for running. I don't personally like having to navigate those 90 degree turns, so flattening out turns or making slightly less uh, harsh angles would be a good idea. Um, we discussed op uh, integrating features of option two. So for example, we quite like the meander and as I say, it had a good flow, but maybe at each end, um, putting those, you know, putting triangles in, uh, like at the northwest corner of, op of reach two, putting a, a, a triangle in there uh, to make the, the flow even easier. Um, and uh, my own little personal thing, and I think this goes for right around Battery Park City, let's reinforce the balustrade along the platform. Uh, pl along platform edge to protect against smaller events and make the balustrades all around Battery Park City non-porous. Half of them at the moment are solid and half of them are, you know, slats and, and water will just go in there. Moving on to Reach 1, North Moore Street. Um, we noted that uh, option one, um, there'd be a loss of trees, I think, for little uh, net gain or improvement uh, from a community point of view. Um, and there's not much point in, in crossing the sidewalk, I don't think. So, you know, it would run along the BMCC at one point and then cross to the sidewalk edge. Uh, option two would result in a net loss of trees because you'd have the wall maintain 15 feet to the trees. Option three, we would regain the trees. So that's probably preferred option. Uh, it would, uh, as has been mentioned before, it would narrow the, the, the traffic way as well and, and, and keep the width of the sidewalk. 9A crossing, I think our town, correct me if I'm wrong guys, had a preference for running the wall along BMCC wall for its entirety. Um, and uh, then cross using the deployable barrier at Chambers Street or just, just slightly north of Chambers Street, so south of the Esplanade, um, maybe uh, towards the overpass there or just, just north of the overpass. Uh, we were discussing swing gates, um, but allow, we'd need to still, that couldn't be, they could not be up against the wall of the school at that point because we would need to allow for emergency egress from the school. Um, we do want to protect the narrow walkway just north of the Esplanade, uh, so wherever, if we use swing gates wherever they're sited, we'd need to make sure that we uh, maintain the narrow walkway just north of the Esplanade and the views as has been discussed before. Another th point that came up, safety aspects all around, uh, just ensuring that crossings are flush to ensure safety for when bike wheels and, and uh, wheelchairs and prams and so on go across any inlaid uh, features. Six. Thank you. Table six. And I'm going to ask you to stand up there. I've for video. Okay, no problem. Although why I have to be on the video, I don't know. But that's all right. <laughs> okay, so um, let's start with reach two. So I'm just kind of goal-oriented, and we picked option three as our preferred choice with modifications. That's the wavy one. We basically said we want to reduce the, um, gr we wanted to increase the green space, reduce the concrete space. And um, one way to do that would be to get rid of the tiered seating and just make one seat. Um, so you've got 
you don't need three, four seats, whether it's gonna be along the buildings or whatever else, just make it one. Um, we like the idea of giving some buffer to the building at Tribeca Point and for the school, but um, at the end of the day, our focus was to um, get rid of the barren waste of space that are the multi-level steps on whatever reach you're gonna put it in, just not. And to increase and put in as many trees as possible because it also keeping in mind that it is a place where people flow through. So I think one of the folks at the other table said it. It is, a, it, it is not a place where people sit. It is not a place where people stay. It's, it's a passageway. So you wanna make sure that there's a lot of open space for that and flow. Um, we also talked about paying attention to the seepage of groundwater and we're talk we actually got some good information and, and discussion about that um, from the folks on the team. But um, a suggestion was that they focus on that and explain it at a different time. That's not a question for choices, it's just information. So that was a good thing to have. Um, and let's see, reach one. All right, once again, we liked option three, but we wanna add trees and keep on the street parking, which means narrowing the streets. And that seemed to be a theme with everybody, it's too big. Didn't think about the bike lane, but if there was space, that's a great idea too, a bike lane as well. But um, Lower Manhattan is a place where parking is just, does it, I know, <laughs> Betty's laughing at me, she's right, I know. <laughs> this on-street parking is important for people, but trees are important for people. So if it's possible to have trees and parking, that would be lovely. Um, and then for the West Side Highway in 9A. So we uh, got confirmed that the Army Corps of Engineers alignment is the western edge of the bikeway, separating the bikeway from the Hudson River Park and Hudson River. And it's gonna be this huge like nine foot, 10 foot wall, which kind of is horrifying. But we at least can get to opine on the area south or between Chamber Street-ish and North Moore Street. So um, the area where we could talk about it would be that of course we like um, having the wall between the, um, let's make this straight, between the highway and the bike, if there has to be a wall, that would be the best place for it. And then we asked about having part wall and part glass, because this way at least the light would get through and people could see, even if it's not beautiful to see through glass, you could still see it and see the water. Um, and then they said they're still studying the options for Harrison to North Moore, and that brings up what Tammy was saying on table uh, four. Um, about you know just not being able to opine on what we don't know yet, how the connections are, but that will come, I'm assuming. And then, of course, near and dear to my heart always is, what will this cost? And you know, we went through it all and they don't know yet, and so as we're sitting here, I almost feel like I'm going to a restaurant and ordering the most expensive thing on the menu, because that, of course, looks the best. And then when we come up with the price tag, we're gonna be like, oh boy. But at the end of the day, it really is important to keep the against, not against the water, but to keep it against the buildings, open up space, and also give as much trees as possible. Thank you. Thank you, table six. Table seven. Yeah, that's seven. So, uh, starting at REACH 2, which is the North of Stuyvesant, um, that we had a concern about the impact on Stuyvesant High School during the construction. Um, there was a certain muttering about not doing pile driving, but maybe screwing the piles in. They would be quieter. Um, so, but that's a concern. The step-down options, which were in two of the free designs, were generally not popular. Um, they were not ADA accessible. They didn't think they'd work for a parents with small kids, and they don't actually get you any, anywhere near the water. Um, they're not accessibility to the water, so they just didn't seem to work for us. Uh, the north side of Stuyvesant High School is shaded for most of the year. I didn't think that the diagrams that we showed represented that correctly. It's got a fairly severe microclimate. The one time of year when it doesn't have is like in midsummer when the sun comes around to the north. And we didn't think that the trees against the water were going to help for that time of year. So uh, as far as the free designs go, you know, the, the, the trees 
close to the residential area were nice. The trees next to the water didn't seem to be so effective. Right. Next was North Moor. Um, I think where it seems everyone else didn't like the design that had the flood barrier sort of bounce around the walkway from, you know, building side to street side. You're going to lose trees, you're going to lose parking. It didn't make any sense. Put it against the building and then give us back the trees, right? Um, give us there and them. And uh, didn't talk about a bike path. Uh, anyone got a problem with a bike path? Um, no, no. I love bike paths. Nine A was the tricky one. We came to no agreement, so we're gonna have to work this up. So the problem is, however, wherever you put the barrier, you lose trees, right? We want the trees back. We want them back on Nine A. We don't want them back in Brooklyn or Queens. It wasn't obvious how to get them back anywhere because the areas where the barrier is not going is already got trees. Um, as far as the the free, it could go down beside BMCC, down the middle, or down next to the bike path, we all know. If it went down beside BMCC, um, it would significantly narrow the walkway, particularly when it's not just the thickness of the barrier, it's the thickness of the barrier and the gates, right? And even though there is parking adjacent to there, there is no plan to give up that parking to recover that walkway or recover those trees. It's just not an option they presented. Wasn't quite clear why we couldn't have that option. If it goes down the middle of the highway, there are, well, all the, all the options have engineering issues. You lose the trees again. You don't lose any walkways. Of course, it's got some visual negatives to it. If it goes down next to the bike path, again, you lose trees. Again, you have the visual negatives. Um, so no agreement, nothing was likable, right? Just, you know, di didn't like any of them. Um, as far as the swing gates go, it's, we were not given enough information to know what their impact would be on walkways or pedestrian access. Um, clearly, when they're closed, they're closed. Not everybody like that, but that's not a problem. But when they, even when they're open, you know, they kind of have to have the same surface level as the street. So what does that mean for the walkway? Um, if you have a swing gate at a street junction, it seemed like you might have to move the crosswalk. Um, we have no problem with them moving it. We wouldn't want them to remove it. It's a different thing. So there would have to be a commitment that if you're putting a swing gate at an intersection and you have to do something about the crosswalk, we still want the crosswalk close to that intersection. Um, uh, and that's about it. But of course, it was all basically horrible on 9A. Yeah, you know, there's sort of just bad and really bad and horribly bad, mostly that. Thank you, Table 7. I'm going to report for Table 8. We had some moms who had to get home to their kids. Um, and so you're going to hear their view, which was pretty much focused on their kids and their kids' future. Um, so for REACH 2, um, they're looking for the least disruptive, um, quickest construction, least disturbance and noise, and that's pretty much their priority. Um, after that comes as many trees and shade trees as possible. Their preference is for benches over stairs. They're concerned that the stairs are not going to be accessible to kids and that they're not going to be accessible to seniors. If there are going to be stairs, they want to see handicapped access and they want to see ramps. Um, they're concerned about the loss of grass and lawn space. They'd rather see grass and lawn space in place of the waterfront steps. Big concern for them is maintaining good views and not having a cement wall. Particular concern is kids looking over that cement wall. Um, why do we need to, do to, to redo the platform instead of just constructing a wall against the building? So that was reach two. Reach one, strongly prefer option three. 
Um, they like the idea of an enhanced streetscape to add trees, planter boxes, and seating. However, they have concerns with views along the bikeway. Um, preference for more transparent material materials to alleviate the elimination of the views. And they are concerned with runoff from concrete walls and prefer aligning the walls against the college so that it's less intrusive. So that's from group eight. And that wraps our reporting. Um, I did want to say before I ask somebody from Battery Park City Authority to say good night. Um, registration is open now for the next workshops, for the March workshops on March 6th. We will be digging into the South Esplanade and South Cove, and March 14th we'll be uh, focusing on North Cove. So please be sure to go to Eventbrite and get yourself registered. We hope that we're going to see you here next time. Hi, everyone. I'm Gwen Dawson, uh, Senior Vice President for Real Property at Battery Park City Authority. Just want to, on behalf of the authority, thank you so much for coming out, spending your time, and, and really um, giving us some great feedback. This is so important to us um, as we move forward this project. It's a hugely important project, and it impacts all of you. Um, uh, directly, and we really, really appreciate your coming. I hope to see you at the next meetings, which uh, the next one is March 6th, right? March 6th. So hope to see you then as well. Thanks again. Good night.